Welcome to the Sales Mindset Podcast. My name's Dennis. I'm Sam. And I'm Brian. All right. Let's uh, pull a question. All right. So today, uh, how can you effectively use technology to enhance your sales? Okay. Uh, it's actually a big question. Hopefully, I can answer it thoroughly. Mm-hmm. Um, where to start? Let's think about it from the entire process. All right. So let's go back to prospecting. And you know, the, the, the starting phrase, how do we use technology, is a bit broad in and of itself. And we, I mean, we use computers all, all the time, right? So let's amend it to how can we use software mm-hmm. to, to do this? Um, because you can obviously Google for things. You can obviously uh, use social media, but is that really technology? So... I think it's important to understand what tools are out there that you can access with your computer that are going to help you be a better salesperson. I'm going to start with artificial intelligence, okay? Uh, because with AI, first thing you can do, even with ChatGPT, which is using dated data, is you can ask it for a prospect list. So if you're really not sure and you don't have access to uh, Zoom info or any of those databases, you can just go to ChatGPT and I've done it. I've said, give me a list of companies with these characteristics, order them from the distance from Gainesville, mm-hmm. and it'll do it for you. You have to know how to use those services. You have to prime it. You have to make sure that it understands what you're looking for, what you're selling, and then, of course, you have to check its work. So you can use that for prospecting. Uh, you wouldn't want to use ChatGPT for data collection on that type of information. You'd want to access databases to be able to do that. So hopefully, you know your company has access to some of that stuff, or uh, if you're affiliated with a university, oftentimes you have databases that you can get your hands on that can also help you gain information about that. Uh, I, I mentioned social media, but LinkedIn is incredibly important as a database of people in the professional world. Mm-hmm. So you want to be able to use that in your prospecting to figure it out. When we're looking at CRM, you've got to use a CRM. If you're not using a CRM, you're setting yourself up to trip and fall face first. Uh, hopefully your company has a CRM. The idea is that you're using it so that you can avoid accidentally poaching someone else's stuff or someone poaching your stuff. So you can do that, and the CRMs, most of them will have some sort of forecasting tool built into them. That's good because then you can see if you're doing enough to, to earn your, your to make, make your quota or earn your commission depending on how you've tweaked it. Uh, if you don't have access to a CRM, you can still do that in Excel. So Excel is, is really good uh, for parsing large chunks of data mm-hmm in and of itself and uh, you want to if you don't know how to use this you want to make sure that you understand x lookup v lookups h lookups in excel and in google spreadsheets because those are some powerful formulas for really finding your data uh, google sheets in particular is a very very useful mechanism for sharing sh- sharing things out of course it's on the cloud and it's google so how much can we trust it but Either way, there's definitely value in understanding how to use those particular those particular tools. Mm-hmm. When it comes to CRMs, most of them are OP. Most of them are way overpowered, and it actually takes a little bit of time to sift through what it does to make mm-hmm. sure you can leverage the, the of the 5 million features to leverage the 10 that you actually need. But the other thing that I think is important when it comes to leveraging data and technology and tools is know when to be a human about it. Uh, you want to make sure that the the computers and the the technology, the software, the databases are there to support you, not drive you around. Uh, DJ Sebastian wrote a book back in 2019, The Selling Revolution, where he talked about how things like ChatGPT and other AI tools are going to help you out. But that's that means that you actually have to be more sophisticated now. If everything you can do now the chatbot can do, what value do you bring to that yeah. relationship? So the idea here is to use the technology for what you got to use it for and then put it down. 
when I was doing initial research on technology to bring it into the classroom, to talk about it in the classroom, one of the things that I was very hesitant to bring it in for was because the, the research was all over the place with how effective it was until I did my own micro meta analysis and put the, the research together. And I realized that the reason that some places found that the more you use technology, the less helpful it is, is because you can use it too much. You can get stuck in the weeds of just looking around this technology tools, fucking around with it basically for all intents and purposes, instead of actually getting out and making those phone calls yeah. and doing what you have to do. So it's use the t technology, but then get off the technology and be a salesperson, be a human, because that's what people want. People want to buy from someone like them uh, and barring that, then they're going to go to Amazon and buy from that, or they're 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 not going to use the humans involved mm -hmm. in that. Yeah. yeah. Well, when there are issues or when there are logistics to settle, the last thing that somebody wants is to go through the script that you've set up or mm. the 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 big platform of wonderful technology you've built to support your business. They want to talk to somebody to negotiate, or they want to talk to somebody to hear word word of mouth. And work back and forth to a solution as opposed to, you know, mm -hmm. traveling down whatever pipeline you push them through. Here's something to think about. Uh, you should be able to be a salesperson without the technology, mm -hmm. but the technology would help you. And let me use a, a non-sales area to really underscore that. Can either of you get from here to um, Cloudland Canyon State Forest in Georgia without using a computer? Well, how many days do I have? <laughs> <laughs> right? And so, uh, you know, I, I saw a TikTok year, it's, it is years ago at this point in time, and the TikTok basically said, how did you, you people navigate before GPS? Yeah. And they're right up there. There's my maps. So yeah. whenever I travel, because the possibility that I'm going to lose cell service, not only do I have a physical map to be able to use and still know how to navigate, but I also print out national park maps because those physical maps that, that you see in gas stations, if they're even there anymore, they don't uh, they don't have a lot of the trails on there. So yeah. it's up and to me to be able roads. to bring all of those with me. Plus, technology can be wrong. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to have the, the maps that I'm getting from uh, from those actual places. So bringing it back to that sales area, if you can't access your CRM, you should still be able to access your contact list in some way, shape, or form. I'm not saying that you necessarily have to have an old school uh, Rolodex or something along those lines to keep track, but do you have things in multiple areas just in case? Yeah. And I think that's a very important. Yeah, and I think uh, I like how you say that. Um, you know, you shouldn't rely on the technology. It really should just be an augmentation mm -hmm. of you know what you're you're doing you know it's there to help you not to become what you do yeah, and the weird job works yeah and that that can, you can very easily get lost and just solely focused on that mm -hmm. but yeah you've got to just you know find something that you can use and that can very that can help you achieve what you're trying to achieve originally and not change really what you're doing mm -hmm. it has to just remain that augmentation not become the actual product yeah there's a story of a lawyer who used chat GPT to write a brief mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, not realizing the limitations of the technology, <laughs> which he's a lawyer and he didn't read the disclaimers that pop up right when you get there. So we'll, we'll let everyone wrap their head around that. But the, he, the judge and the other counsel questioned some of the assertions made and it's because he didn't actually double check what the technology was yeah. doing. It's lazy uh, and you don't want to do that with technology. So I talked about prospecting, but how else can you use things like ChatGPT uh, to do what you need to do? So I will be honest, I suck with writer's block. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how to start emails off a lot of times. So what I can do with ChatGPT is basically whip up a new window, give it the information I need it to understand in order to write the email, and say, can you write this, or not say, can you write this email, but please write this email. <laughs> and yes, I do, I do, I am polite with chat. <laughs> but you have to be, you yeah. want to be spared when they it's, take over. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> our, uh, our robot overlords. Um, and, uh, and it'll bang out an email. Is it a good email? It's, it's a passable email. To be quite honest, ChatGPT is clearly looking at 
publicly available data with all the bad emails we get from salespeople and it just looked like yeah. that. But I can take that email and I say, oh, I can wordsmith into this into my words appropriate to the customer and in a way that's going to resonate with the customer and not sell, sound spammy or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's you're really just helping it, helping you to get over that certain little hump, you know, it's kind of mm-hmm. holding you back and just like that, you know, something that might take you, whatever, five minutes, takes you three or two. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. cut that time down. Uh, cut stress down in some cases, especially yeah. when it comes to writing. Because I, I just, again, I'll just sit there looking at the screen, a little blinking cursor, and I'm like, yeah, what the fuck do I write? <laughs> it's the concept of, of inspiration, yeah. where all it takes is for you, if you're an artist, to see mm-hmm. the right scene or the right person to be like, ah, that's mm-hmm. what I want to paint or sculpt or however. And the idea of seeing somebody else try to say what you want to say is going to prime what you need to say it in your own words. Yeah. yeah. And I've also seen uh, you could use AI products like ChatGPT mm-hmm. to reply to emails. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Wasn't it doing like an automatic reply or was that the, uh, the Microsoft AI? Uh, Microsoft AI might have that as well where it'll automatically reply for you or or something along those lines. I don't trust it enough to do that. I'd want to read it and, yeah, and yeah. double check what it happens to be saying. But, uh, you know, just, again, feeding it the right information so that it comes out with uh, something that's going to give you something to work with. Again, don't just take it, copy, paste, send. That's, that's you know, asking for, for trouble. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, you know, get taking it to a collaborative level as well, and I, I only thought about this because I heard Discord rip in the background. <laughs> There's also a lot of collaboration tools out there as well. Yeah, uh, that can help your team and help you work with your team. But same thing, if you're especially if you're a sales manager, you want to create a culture of people with people as opposed to people yeah. operating <laughs> through the tendrils of the internet. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Going through. Uh, I've probably over the last couple of years had five different communication apps for teams. <laughs> I just got a new one, Signal. I'd never heard of it before until I just got it. It's another like social media app mm. where people use you know Facebook or Slack or however. Yeah. And some are better than others, but you definitely need something like that, even if you're a totally in-person team. Mm-hmm. I, I've worked at places where it's just a group chat with 50 people. And that you, doesn't sound chaotic at all. No, it's it's it works really well. Like if you want to if you want to reflect back on what somebody else said or see a p- picture that somebody posted, it's it's very doable. Yeah, it sounds like uh, some of the group me's for class. Yeah. <laughs> Believe it uh, or not, as much as I embraced group me for the classes, it got pretty overwhelming. Yeah. Where I'd have five different group me's and I just couldn't keep up with uh, even the DMs. People, I. I got to the point where I'm like, you need to text me because this is important and I I can't handle the mess of notifications on the phone. I I don't think I ever really said much in it, but I would always just die laughing when someone would use it for something like not related to class at all. Well, and that's the problem with even collaborative tools for work. You know, when someone comes in and selling Taylor Swift tickets or something along those lines. Yeah. So you need a good content moderation when, and company policies as to what's appropriate to put in a group chat and what's not appropriate yeah. to put in a particular group chat. Uh, my inability to, to police that for class is a perfect example um, <laughs> with, uh, with, with respects to that. But you'll see companies doing that problem, too. Yeah, uh, I've always been the reason that those rules exist in the organizations. <laughs> You're selling your Taylor honest. Swift, or are you Swifty? Oh, no, not <laughs> not in those situations. More so uh, very work-appropriate, you know, mm-hmm. photos or memes. You're like, hey, guys, check this out. It's oh, like, yeah. hey, we need to uh, manage the way that we use this group chat, so <laughs> let's roll out yeah. a new list of rules. Brian gets called to HR. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So I was uh, struggling really with prospecting initially. And, you know, I just started to do some research on some software that, you know, might be able to help me. Mm-hmm. And I ended up finding a pretty good website that I'm, I've been using for the past uh, two or three weeks. And I'm, I mean, my prospecting went from like very, very poor mm-hmm. to, I mean, I can find 125 contacts or 200 contacts like and less than an hour yeah and I mean night and day compared to what I was doing so it's finding those right uh, the right software mm-hmm. that can really just elevate you but at the same time you know I'd, yeah like you said before you know you just can't 
let it overcome everything about you. Use, you a launch, use it as a launch pad. Yeah. What, what was the name of that software again? It was uh, Apollo.io. Yeah. That's free, right? Uh, yeah, I'm, I've just got a free version right now, and it's been it's been great. Sounds yeah. sponsored. Yeah, yeah, spon- yeah, yeah hey, that's free, right? Yeah. Yeah, if you want to sponsor us, Apollo, <laughs> we're here. Um, excellent, excellent. You, you guys are doing great work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there you have it. Data, technology, AI. We could probably talk a lot about that, uh, but... Uh, we'll we'll put it in end here, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>